Hello, welcome to Newsroom Servers. I'll be your host and you can be the client. Okay, so we're going to talk about Newsroom Servers and how they work in a broadcast facility. So in the beginning, all capture was done using film and typewriters. Archiving of stories was via file cabinet, film vaults, and human memory. I hate to say it, but I think I've used every one of these. I went to film school in Montreal. I took typewriting in high school, and I learned how to file forward and file reverse and put a string on my finger. Uh, videotaped arrived. Uh, arrived in the... Uh, early 70s. Um, then all capture was done using videotape recorders, uh, word processors on PCs in the 80s. Archiving was done being tape backups and videotapes and word pro documents. Newsroom computer systems, NCSs, now it's, serve, it's server based with PC clients. So basic component of a Newsroom computer system is the first part is the ingest. We have the storage, digital asset management, media editing, digital news production, and finally playout. Ingest, multimedia sources inputted into the system. So as an example, we have a OptiBase ingest server in this diagram. Uh, what we have is a videotape recorder, a video, some sort of video recorder or server would be an input to it. We'd have a, a camera, which could be ENG, electronic news gathering, or it could be a, a live from either a, a satellite microwave feed on a remote news uh, cast or, or production. And it would come into our NCS server. Ingest sources, uh, news wires, feeds, ticker tapes. Examples of that are Associated Press, Canadian Press, Reuters. So uh, companies like uh, um, newspapers and journalists, what they'll do is they'll, they'll um, put their stories either on Associated Press, Canadian Press, Reuters, and they will be uh, shared across the world and they'll get a, a little kickback for every time someone uses it. Uh, satellite feeds, it could be uh, videotape recorders, uh, PCs, remotes. We talked about remote feeds. Our, our RSS feeds are a really simple syndic syndication. It's uh, a content distribution method that allows you to stay up to date on websites and other information. They will feed you the news uh, and also websites too. So some statistics for ingest, and this is this is actually old, as BBC News headquarters would get 500 hours of video and audio arrive every day, and more than 1,000 new media assets are created. Right, so we get a lot of uh, information that is being uh, pummeled on us. TSN in 2014 was getting 750 terabytes per day of data coming in. That's a lot of data. So one of the things you have to do is start logging. Um, this is an example of sports shot logging, and you actually get a, a big screen, touch screen uh, display, and you have a program running on it, and you log on the fly. So this one shows a uh, um, shot logging for a soccer game. So some of the things is uh, uh, as they're watching, if some if they scored a goal, they'd press the goal button over here, uh, right here, and if it was a shot, a free kick. Uh, throw in injury penalty and what we have is our time code here so what it does is it puts this information says that 10 33 23 uh, 27 there was a shot or a free kick or an injury right so that way we can log on the fly and keep track of what's going on because in a uh, like an example a soccer game might be two hours long in that two hours there's really maybe only five minutes of highlights so rather than have to search through it you can log it and keep track of it uh, as it's played. Um, this is an example of sports logging uh, by a sporting event. This was either, I think it was a uh, Pan American Games um, or something along that lines. And what you had is different sports that you could look and you can log and see what's going on. And that if you were uh, doing news storage, uh, second part of it is storage. You got all this ingest coming in. Now you got to store it. And the basis is a broadcast video servers that we talked about before. It could be storage area networks and network attached storages or individual machines. And then, 
Storage workflow, one of the problems, we've got all this data coming in. Uh, data is only retained for five to seven days. So we're going to hold on to it for five to seven days. And after that, we're going to trash it, right? And the reason is we just don't have the storage capability. Uh, important material is archived, so we filtered it through. Uh, we've looked at it and said, okay, there's an hour of uh, uh, the so two hours of the soccer game. Five minutes is what we want to hold on. Those are the important things. So what we'll do is archive it, and we'll have an archive server. Uh, digital asset management is the third part. It's integrated into Newsworm clients for researching and collating past news stories. Uh, it's a computer system for ingesting, annotating, cataloging, storage, and retie retrieval of digital photographs, animations, videos, and music. What it does is it enables users, which are the uh, news reporters when they're building their stories or sports casters, is to find, access, share, reuse, distribute, and archive all types of digital content. Now, we got some names. Slug names is uh, the, the name for raw uh, pre-production uh, objects, right? So they call multimedia objects. We got a shot coming in. It's going to give it. We're going to give it a slug name. Metadata is the term used to categorize the multimedia objects. Metadata is a whole dictionary of terms, uh, and it, what it does is it's, every shot that comes in, or every story that comes in, or every raw data or audio, we give it a title. We give it a location, photographer who shot it, the episode, the date. And it's a standard consistent category for storing data, very similar to the library system. Libraries use the same terminology and, and metadata. Um, MOS is a standard created by the Associated Press. It's called the Media Object Server. It's a communications protocol. So we have a communications protocol that's used between MOS servers and the news room computer systems, NCS, is to exchange information. So the Associated Press did this. They realized that we've got all this data. How are we going to uh, um, manipulate it? How are we going to find our information? How are we going to store it? So what MOS does, it exchanges descriptive data for media objects. It pushes the data to the NCS's objects, are created, modified, or deleted. And the NCS can perform searches and manipulate the data the MOS has sent. So it, it tags the information, the media, with this uh, um, metadata information. It also allows something really cool is a playlist exchange. So the uh, a newsroom uh, NCS server can build and transfer playlist information to the MOS. So one of the things it does is it adds time code to it. right? And it can control the sequence that media objects are played or represented by MOS. So this is going to be important when we get into the newsroom servers. Uh, status exchange, it can give you status on what's happening with the clips and the MOS in general and can notify the MOS of the status of specific playlist items and running order. So we're looking at the, uh, the playlist. Medium exchange format, uh, it's created by SEMTI, a Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, to deal with MPEG streams. So it's a container or wrapper format which supports a number of different streams of coded essence. So essence is the term used to describe the audiovisual data in a MXF file. Um, so we can call it a transport stream or, or uh, a production stream. We've, we've seen this as MPEG data streams. We talked about this earlier uh, with ASI, um, and it's the media exchange format. Encoded with any of a variety of codecs with a descriptive metadata wrapper. So it, it's, it has the, the information plus the metadata wrapper describing what it is. Has full-time code and metadata support. Uh, the next stage is media editing. So we have desktop editors or nonlinear editors. Nonlinear means that we can grab the uh, shots in any order. It's not like a, a tape, which is a linear editor, where we have to re rewind the tape or go forward to, to capture a little piece of video that we want. We can just pick it up. And it's for video and audio. Also, what happens is that we have a graphic editor, which is separate from the nonlinear editor, which deals with the uh, the raw video and audio. And then we also have character generators. So graphic editors do the animation. Character generators generally add the titles and, and the uh, information for things like a teleprompter. Uh, media editing allows journalists to edit and send stories to air while being 
able to make last minute changes to the playlist. So uh, what happens is that we can edit on the fly. Uh, transcoding is the term. Media is transcoded from high to low resolution for editing. The reason we do that is low resolution media is faster and easier to work with. It's not a, as big as a file. It needs less powerful computers and not as high power a network. After editing low re resolution media, the high resolution media is edited live on the air based on the editing instructions and the time code that's used. So what we have is uh, the low media editing is, is the rules that says how are we going to edit the uh, high resolution media. Uh, so the last part is digital news production. Well, actually, it's not. There's a play out after this one, but digital news production. Uh, we have live to air. As we mentioned before, we can edit news stories on the fly while live. Any part of the rundown sequence, and that's the playlist, it's called the rundown sequence, it can be changed, added or deleted up to the very moment that it's aired. And it also provides a teleprompter feed. So when the uh, news anchor is reading the news, he's reading it from the teleprompter and it can change and it might be something that he's first time he's seeing it so he they're reading it and it's the first time they've seen it it's it's a hot news topic so um, sometimes we'll see errors on the uh, on the screen because they're reading it for the first time and they get surprised or whatever a playout is the last one the final output of the production and the playout can uh, is what do we do with that uh, our output we send it to a cable feed a satellite feed a transmitter a web interface a cell phone our ss feed um, a podcast right so we have all of these different outputs um, and it also before it gets there it goes to transmission control transmission control is the part that schedules and directs the playout destinations so what it'll do is it'll take the news it'll put it out and then it'll also insert things like uh, uh, commercial breaks it'll insert uh, um, things like labeling in the corner station identification and subjects like that so when we do playout then we have all sorts of options of what media do we want to send it out? This one shows uh, uh, we can have cell phone, shows a really old uh, BlackBerry cell, or it can go to a web page, it can go to uh, transmission. Here it says it's hooked up, it looks like some iPhone, iPad thing, and that. Uh, and so that's sort of the basic parts of what we uh, Newsroom Server does. Okay, I'm, uh, thank you very much for uh, listening, and if you like this video, uh, hit the up button, uh, like button, and also uh, subscribe to this channel, and uh, if you have any comments, put it down below. I'd like to read them. Thank you.